My name is Ted Manuel. Hello to all of you. Uh, I am an Air Force veteran, uh, born in Minnesota, grew up in San Diego, California. Uh, didn't come to Chicago until 1949. Uh, enrolled in Roosevelt College when it was still a college. Today it's a university. I was in November of my sophomore year when it became suddenly apparent that I had not notified my San Diego draft board that I was enrolled in college in order to get a deferment. They sent me a letter, Dear John, the Army wants you, <laughs> which was unsettling to say the least. Having grown up in San Diego from age 11 to high school, through high school, I had had a chance to see pretty much everything to do with the military. San Diego is one of the biggest naval stations in the country. It's where the Naval Training Station is. Up the way was the Marine Corps Training Depot. There was an Army Depot. So as kids, we watched all of them come into the city on Liberty, especially after 1941, after Pearl Harbor, when they quickly got trained and were sent overseas. So the military was nothing new to me. In fact, a high school buddy of mine and I used to deliver dry cleaning to the sailors aboard the destroyers and what have you in the bay. So we got to see how they bunked and how they ate, which was not very fetching. Uh, I remember since they let us eat breakfast in the mess hall, having breakfast with them, which consisted of oatmeal, no milk, coffee, black, and a green banana. Neon green banana. It did not inspire me to want to join the Navy. A high school buddy of mine was already in the Air Force. So I called him and said, Bill, I got a letter that said I should join the Army. He said, Hold it. Step one, tear it up. <laughs> Throw it away. Step two, enlist in the Air Force. Because you'll come here. San Antonio Lackland Air, Base, Air Force Base is the only training depot in the country. I'll see that you're escorted properly and do all right once you get here. He never lied to me before, so <laughs> that's what I did. Wound up in the Air Force, signed up for four years. Went to Lackland, wound up with some of his guidance in Human Resources Research Center, which was the psychological processing branch of the Air Force. They tested everybody who came through using STAY-9 tests which stands for standard nine tests. The lowest grade you can get is a one, the highest is a nine. And it tests your aptitude and or ability in such things as uh, electrical interest and ability, uh, other technological skills, radio maybe, and so on. Uh, my grades turned out pretty good with a lot of help from Bill, I must say, and I wound up where I said I wound up. And worked in a Class A uniform my entire life in the Air Force. Uh, wound up as a member of a special testing detachment whose job it was to, to test people who wanted to be air crew members, pilots, navigators, radar observers. During my stay, <clears throat> pardon me, in the Air Force, I had said to Bill, as long as I'm here, I would love to go to pilot training school. He said, apply. I went to talk to them. Requirement, two years of college. I had one year plus part of a semester. So I thought maybe by taking classes held on the base, extension courses, and 
traveling to campus off base, I could quickly get my needed hours and apply in time and be sent to training school. But since we were in San Antonio, Texas, when I first posed that question to Bill, he said, well, let's just go down to San Antonio College and enroll you while you're here. Now, one thing I left out is I happen to be African American. Bill happened to be white. We knew each other all through junior high and high school. It never occurred to him that there might be a problem. We went to enroll me. They gave me the form to fill out. I filled it out. They asked me no questions. I told them no lies. I guess it was my somewhat ambiguous appearance. I enrolled. I attended my first class night school. I had a car that I drove back and forth from the base. Upon finishing my first class, heading back to my car, I heard a voice calling my name across the open plaza inside the school grounds. I looked up and then, sure enough, it was a distinguished looking man in a dress suit in his early 50s, jogging my way, and I could tell it was the dean. I said, hi, dean, how are you? He says, breathlessly, Manuel, Manuel, is it true? I said, is what true, dean? He says, are you Negro? And I said, why, yes. He says, Manuel, I'm going to have to ask you to disenroll. I said, how come? Now, here I am, Minnesota, no segregation. California, no segregation. How come, Dean? Why, if the state found out you were enrolled here, they would take away our accreditation. Now, who would I be taking away the accreditation of San Antonio College just to keep the segregationists happy? I disenroll. The only other place that I could enroll was a black college, and I looked at the curriculum, and I could learn how to do dry cleaning and a lot of other menial tasks, but nothing having to do with academics. Being in an aircraft repair squadron, fixing up, shot up, saber jets, we knew what was going on over there, but we were a fur piece, as they say, uh, from Korea. So I got no taste of the shooting that the Army and Marines were involved in over there, which was darn brutal, especially in the middle of winter, uh, where they were ill-clothed, ill-prepared, much as the German Wehrmacht was after it invaded Russia. In World War II, Hitler sent them there with no winter clothing, and many of them froze to death after being stymied by the Russians. Uh, it's nice to think that the higher-ups know what they're doing. Sometimes they do, not always. And the Korean War was rushed upon us, if you'll remember. Harry Truman was president, and that was the second hot potato handed to him. The first being, should we or should we not drop the atomic bomb to end the war? A lot of people criticized him for that. Uh, a lot of latecomers. But if they researched the history books, they would find that more people died in the saturation orthodox, ordinary bombing of Tokyo and other places then died in Hiroshima and Nagasaki together from the atomic explosions. Uh, at least 10 square miles of Tokyo was completely burned out. Uh, a million people were made homeless by incendiary bombs, which we call just ordinary weapons of war. In war, there is no give. There is nothing ordinary. Uh, in the European theater, there was the complete bombing of Coventry. And another city in Germany was bombed to make up for it. 
civilians die, not just military people. So in my way of thinking, uh, Harry did the right thing. Otherwise, based on the numbers killed and wounded at Guadalcanal, Iwo Jima, Tarawa, Bougainville, through the Pacific, we would have suffered a million of our casualties attacking, and so would the Japanese. Uh, the emperor surrendered because he wanted there to continue to be a Japan. He could see what was happening with Nagasaki after Hiroshima, and he said, this has got to stop, even though he was a warlord himself. Harry's uh, other big challenge was he desegregated the military by executive order in 1948. <clears throat> uh, never mind that black soldiers have served in every war, repeat, every war that America has ever been involved in, including fighting alongside George Washington at Valley Forge, which is not made part of the American narrative, but it happened. There were 15,000 newly freed slaves or runaway slaves or freed men that joined the Continental Army fighting against the British in the Revolutionary War. Hardly anybody knows that. And they, they were with Teddy Roosevelt when he stormed San Juan Hill. That was not publicized. You just didn't give credit to Negro soldiers at the time. They fought in World War I. Our white officers would not take command of black troops because they were that prejudiced. The black troops had to fight under French commanders. They were given French rifles. These, those can be seen here at the DeSable exhibit. They had to learn a little bit of French. They had to wear French helmets and earned more medals from the French government than all of the other American Expeditionary Force troops that fought in that war. Who knows today that that happened? They got Croix de Guerres and all of the minor medals. And yet, if you study American war history, you have to hunt deep to find books written concerning what the black troops did. It extended from World War I into World War II. <clears throat> until 48 when Truman desegregated, everybody was still segregated. I think it was either the Marines or the Navy, probably the Navy that was the last to follow those instructions from the president. So it had not yet fully worn off by 1950, 48 to 52 lousy years. That's not very long for an institutional turnaround. In fact, if everybody will remember what they've seen on television, President uh, Clinton, President W. Bush, President Herbert Walker, Bush's father, and President Obama all conferred medals of honor on black soldiers long after World War II to honor their heroism. Why had they not been honored right after World War II? The answer, because segregationists in the military were still running things in the Pentagon. And when the paperwork came through, did they put it through for the medal? No, they threw it in the trash can or back in the file. So if anybody wants to ask me, what did I learn in the military? It was about the remnants of Jim Crow segregationist mentality and getting treated wrong as far as they were able to get away with it. Everybody who served should have had their service acknowledged and everyone who was killed should have had their life acknowledged. For many of those that the later presidents did honor at the White House bestowing medals on them. Some of them were in wheelchairs by then, they were so old. Uh, some of the, their medals had to be accepted by their children and their grandchildren because they had died. Uh, and so it went. Uh, 
all you can do is, is study the history and honor the history, even if it's a bit late for some of them. Many black World War II veterans who returned home wearing their uniforms to towns and cities in the Deep South were set upon and brutally beaten, many of them killed, because they had the temerity to wear the uniform of the United States Army home to the Deep South. There is so much to the overall story that hasn't been either told or not thoroughly told or widely told or properly told. It still needs to be told. And why you see today the children and grandchildren of those veterans demonstrating in big cities today against police misconduct. The patterns have not changed. Uh, though we did what we did when the country called on us to serve, we still get the short end of the stick. When I graduated from the University of Illinois, my major was land economics, as I said, which is real estate. My, I was three hours short of a major in, in advertising, marketing. Even with someone white running interference for me, I could not get an interview at a single Chicago advertising agency. If I have any message to share, a life lesson to kids today is, if you get slapped down, get back up. Uh, persevere. Inside of each of you is a skill, a talent, that is stronger than that of your classmates. And it is probably what you were meant to do in life. It's the thing that you never grow tired of and you become better and better at. Uh, it could be leading you to a career in law. It could be leading you to become a truck driver. It could be leading you to become a celebrity chef. It could be anything, whatever it is. It's your bliss. Follow it and be true to it and develop yourself as best you can. Uh, my father worked at Consolidated Aircraft Company during the war. Their motto was, nothing short of right is right. I embrace that, and you should too. Don't settle for half measures. Don't settle for almost as good. Become the good person, the best at it, that others try to be. And just keep striving.